All right. Good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all have taken your lunch. Okay. First of all, thank you for coming to this uh, web seminar. And my name is Jimmy. I'm the sales and marketing engineer from EPE Busway. So today, me and my colleague Shafiq will be the presenter of this web seminar. Of course, the topic uh, and the purpose of this web seminar is to introduce all of you the EP bus stack system. Okay. So now let's get started. So EP Busway is now a subsidiary company of a micro Berhad group. And micro Berhad is already 23 years old. And our EP factory is located in Nilai. To be precise, it's a Nilai tree. So we are the bus stack manufacturer. So our local sales and marketing team will be the micros and Duran Berhad. And the overall workforce of our EP busway will be about 100 staff and workers, including our subcontractors. So this is our office in Nilai and also the factory. And of course, EP Busway is the origin in Malaysia. Everything is made in Malaysia. And we do export to overseas also. So we do have uh, uh, projects in all these countries. And some of the countries are represented by our agents. And of course, EP Busway is a registered company. We do under, register under the SSM. We have the manufacturing license by MITI. And then it has also local state council, which is the Majis Pabandai Nilai. And then EP Busway is an ISO certified company. And our products are certified by third party like ASTA, UL, TSB, CDM, and DECRA. So we do register under MOF also. And then we have Petronas and TMB license and also the JKR email approval. So here are some uh, general knowledge uh, to share with you. These are the comparison table, or so-called advantages of bus stack compared with cables. As you all know, bus stack is as you know, bus stack is a uh, is the alternative solution for conventional cables. Okay, so you can see. So the biggest difference, of course, is in terms of the enclosure. Mm -hmm. So bus stack is made of a solid and rigid material like steel and aluminum compared with cables normally compared with cables and normally made of PVC or PE which is a soft and can be damaged easily okay so in bus stack also we have our IP ratings in terms of design and installation Bus stack has a compact design, or so-called we call it sandwich design, which allow it to save a lot of space compared with the cables, especially in high ampere ratings. Uh. Cables, you need large cable trays, and then the RYB phase, okay? The RYB phase will require a big bundle of cables. So compared with the bus stack, our bus stack is fixed at the 125 mm height, and then the only thing changes with MP ratings is the width. And then in terms of installation, bus stack is uh, much easier to install compared with cables. As cables, you require more manpower. Okay, and then of course you need a cable tray. All the manpower cable trays, all these are the additional costs. But in bus stack, you can save the cost in manpower and also the support structure. Because in bus stack, you only need to use the channel hanger. In terms of performance wise, bus stack has a lower voltage drop compared with cables, which are higher voltage drop. And then bus stack also has a lower EMF because of the sandwich design. And it generate less heat. Okay? And normally it's tested under a higher ambient temperature, which is a 40 degrees Celsius. But cables, normally they tested under 30 degrees Celsius of ambient temperature. And in terms of the flexibility, 
last time is very flexible in terms of it can be modified okay be replaced easily if the particular bus stop has any problem but cables you have found any issue you may need to change the whole line of cables and the prices wise of course okay when you compare to okay bus stop in terms of material price bus stop okay, in low ampere ratings is the price is uh, more expensive than cable but when we compare bus stop and cable price you need to compare the overall cost which includes the material the installation costs and also the support structure costs so in cables you need more manpower costs and then the support structure you will need a cable tray so the bigger the ampere the bigger the cable tray whereas the bus stop is only used a c channel and hanger rod so overall when you compare especially in high ampere ratings the bus stop prices will be very competitive compared with cables okay so just like cables bus stop also have aluminum conductors and also copper conductors so what are the difference so let's see this uh, comparison table so of course the biggest difference are the is the price okay aluminum is much cheaper than copper it's about 40 to 50 percent cheaper okay and then the price of aluminum is also much stable compared with copper because copper we are looking at the lme copper price which is a uh, changing or fluctuating every day in terms of performance wise okay aluminium and copper i can say they are the same what aluminium what copper buster can perform aluminium buster can also do the same of course in terms of the conductivity aluminium is always uh, lower than copper so what we do is that we upsize the conductor bar okay for example maybe like the same ampere ratings okay the aluminum will have a bigger or so-called one size bigger in terms of the conductor bar because it's in order to cater back the performance so the short circuit capacity are almost similar okay aluminum has an, another advantage in terms of wick which is uh, aluminum as you know is a lighter material compared with copper so it makes it uh, easier to handle easier to install at the site another voltage drop Aluminum is only slightly higher than copper. For the production period or the lead time, aluminum is a shorter than a copper bus up. And in terms of the certification wise, our aluminum and copper bus up are all type tested and certified by third party. So basically, EP busway, we manufacture two categories of bus up, which is the low voltage bus up, the sandwich type normally used in commercial buildings and we do also manufacture the medium voltage bus stop it's up to 36 kV it's the NSPB type normally used in the power plants or oil and gas okay, so this is our medium voltage bus stops okay, it's up to 36 kV and the rated current is up to 6500 amps this is the NSPB type okay. And then it's tested and designed based on IC 62271-200. Okay, so on top of it, you can see that's the low voltage air insulator type, type bus duct. It's rated up to 3.6 kV. And the rated current is up to 6,500 amps. It's normally for AC and DC power application. And then it is also designed and tested based on the standard IC 62271-200. And then the bottom one is our sandwich bus tux, which is our main point today. Okay, it's up to one kV and 6,300 amps. You have a three phase, three wire, four wire, five wire and even six wire three phase six wire is a 200 percent neutral and of course we do have copper and aluminum bus stop and the ip ratings would up to ip68 tested based on ic61439-6 so this is Okay, so this is our some of our customer we have worked before. 
guys, you can see there's a lot of uh, Japanese customers like a Toshiba, Aeon, okay, Gamunda, MRT, Airports, Kajima, and so on. And there are some project reference also for local and international. Okay, then this is some of our project reference. Okay, so you can see we do supply to a lot of sectors, okay, to the power plants, okay, and then the manufacturing plant like the Motorola plant, Toyota plants, the panels, plant, and then we do supply to shopping malls, the A. University So our joint, so you can see this is so-called the bridge type joint, or you can say it's a single bolt design. The nuts, okay, it's a, so we call it a double headed nut, whereby it will break, or so-called you call shear off when it's fully tightened to a torque of 160 to 180 Newton meter. So later on, my colleague Shafiq will explain about the installation of this. So this is our insulation, okay? It's called polyolefin, 155 degrees C. The insulation process is an extrusion process. And polyolefin is a flexible and soft type insulation with a 1.5 mm thickness. Polyolefin has a good thermal resistance. And also it is an eco-friendly product, which means it's non-toxic, okay? And it's a good fire and water resistant. And this extrusion process, means no harm on the conductors, okay, compared with other process, okay, and polyolefin can withstand mechanical strain against impact. Okay, and then this is our plug-in units. It's catered up to 400 m. So the MCCB is uh, subjected to the project. You can use any brand. Okay, of course, it is come with interlocking system, which means that when the MCCB is in on position, you cannot open the box. It's a safety mechanism. And then also you can see the clamp at the back, spring clamp. The clips, we have extra spring clamp to avoid any loose contact during the attachment. And then every plug you need will provide a clip okay, to prevent any incidents. And you can see this is the insulation block okay, at the clips. This is not to just prevent faults, but also act as a guide, okay, a guidance for the installer to slide into the plug-in holes okay, easily, easier. Now, of course, we do have a tap off units. Okay, this is for above 400 ampere, and you can cater up to 1,600 amps. The difference is this is the one that fixed at the factory, and then we deliver to the site. So the plug-in box is will be installed at the site.
And of course, okay, we do have a quality testing. Okay, we run our tests, okay, our bar start, we have 100% testing, which means we run on, doesn't matter how many units of bar start you order, 10 units, 100 units, okay, 1000 units, we will test on each and every pieces. Normally we do the mega test on, and the high test based on the IC standard, okay, IC 61439-6, and then we we'll submit the report together. Okay, now come test to our test certification. So our bus stop is all type tested. Okay, so our EP bus stop, okay, our copper bus stop, medium voltage, low voltage, medium voltage aluminum, low voltage aluminum bus stop, and our plug in units, our mini bus stop, and also our A insulated bus stop all the products we have type tested under the IC standard and also certified by the third party. So let me show you, okay. These are the clauses, huh? okay, wait. Okay, these are the clauses in IC 61439-6. This is applicable to the low voltage sandwich master, copper and aluminum. So these are all the clauses we have tested, okay which is the strength of material and parts, the degree of protection, clearances, the creepage distances, the protection against electric shock okay, and dielectric properties, temperature rise limits, short circuit withstand strength, electromagnetic compatibility, the mechanical operation, resistant to flame propagation and also the fire resistant in building penetration. So all the above clauses has been carried out and then certified by the third party body certification like ASTA, DECRA and UL. Okay, so you can see these are our certificates for copper bus nuts. For copper bus nuts, we have 14 ratings from 400M up to 6300M. And each MP rating, we have undergone testing and certified by ASTA. And then these are the certificate for aluminum. We have 12 ratings, which means 12 certificates. is certified by DECRA, UL and ASTA. And we do send on some of our samples of our product to CIRIM, okay? These are some additional certificates. Aluminum and copper. CIRIM is a test certification body in Malaysia. Okay, and then these are the additional tests we have invested, okay? It's a, we tested on our PIU, which is the plug-in units. We tested the IP68 bus stock, our medium voltage bus stock, our fire rated bus stocks, our mini bus stocks, and also seismic, which means the uh, earthquake, carrying out the earthquake test on our bus stock. So of course, uh, some here are some photos to show you on the testing point. Testing is the test, the mega test, okay, with uh, also a FAT with our customers. Okay, and then we do have an independent test lab in uh, PP factory. It's a third party test that is called HVTL, whereby you can always request for a temperature rise test here upon special request. Okay. And then also hypo test up to 100 kV. Okay, now here are some photos on our mass stocks.
All right, sorry, I think we just wait a while. All right, okay. So these are our bus stops. Okay, we customize every so this is the flange chain, and this is the horizontal T elbow. Of course, the plug in units also. And then this is also our like T elbow. Some T elbow, and then of course a special. And these are the special elbow with a special angle, and then the reducer also. Spring hangers. And these are the photos of our medium voltage bus stop. Okay, so this in the middle is the special flange chain box. Okay, connecting. And of course, we do our fumigation and packing on ourselves also. Okay, here are some uh, installation photo at the side. Eh? So you can see, okay, there's a, on the right hand side, there's a transformer connection okay, with the bus stop flange chain. And these are the outdoor bus stop uh, with the canopy on it. So compared with cables, you can see bus stop is uh, much tidy and space saving. Okay, and do of course this is our medium voltage bus stop. So you can see medium voltage normally is for, for outdoor application, and also there's an indoor application. These are power plant projects. Okay, these are also medium voltage bus stops. These are also power plants project. So mostly are outdoor. Of course, we do participate in, in exhibition also, and then we always welcome our customer to have a factory visit to see our production and our products. Okay, because I believe that seeing is believing. Okay, now, so this will be the bus stop installation inside. I will hand over this session to my colleague. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shafi. I'm a sales and project engineer. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Thank you to my colleague, Mr. Jimmy, for the previous presentation. Now, for my part, I will explain about our busway installation. Side. Okay. Okay. So basically. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry for the delay. Okay. So basically, this is our installation manual. Uh, we will give to you this installation manual together with our deliver bus start. However, if you would like to have this installation manual for your further reference and proposal, we can send to you by the email. So I will go through these slides so that you have a clear picture about our EPE busway installation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a pre-inspection check before the installation. Before you do the installation, you must have the inspection on the bus duct and also for the plug-in box. For the bus duct, there are three things need to be implemented. 
Firstly, you need to check for you need to check for any existence of waters on the bus duct. After that, you need to perform the mega testing to check for the insulation breakdown before the insulation. Then you need to make sure all the dust ended should be removed prior to installation. Okay, so for the plug in box, first you must make sure the clips are equipped with the contact grease at the edge. And please do not pry the clips to widen the gap. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is the busway joint installation. So you can see here they are the this this is the procedures for the busway joint installation. The main point here is about the top range of joint parts. At the bottom of the slide, you can see here they are both size, joint area, and tightening top. If you see at the M14 bolt size, which is at the joint block. The tightening torque is around 160 to 180 newton meter. So you need to apply this required torque, whereby it cannot be more or lesser than that. <clears throat> I will explain about this M14 and tightening torque for, uh, for the further explanation at the next slide. Okay, so for your information, EPE busway provides double header nut to form joint loosening. Alternate will show off or so called as straight when the required tightening top is achieved. So, like I mentioned just now, the required tightening top is 160 to 180 Newton meter. You need to tighten the nut by using the EPE M40 socket. If you see at the middle of this slide, there is a picture where you can see it is a EPE M14 socket. So by using this tool, you need to tighten the nut and the outer nut will act as a lock nut to prevent from loosening. Sorry for taking your time. We are waiting for the slides to come. Okay, these are some pictures of our busway joint installation. I will, I will explain these pictures for you. Okay, for the first picture, during the installation, you need to have a good alignment for the vertical and horizontal run bus ducts. In order to achieve this, you can use two tools. First, you can use the plumb line or water level. For the second picture, after you have a good alignment, you need to insert the bus duct by sliding the joint case along the joint block until the joint case is stopped by the joint block. After that, if you see at the third picture, they are empty bolt or so called as a line bolt. You need to install this M6 flange bolt by using the M6 wrench. Okay, then we move to the next slide. You need to replace the joint cover, and after that, you need to put the M8 flange bolt by using the M8 wrench. And last but not least, if you see at the seventh picture, okay, we need to tighten this M14 double headed knife by using the M14 wrench until it is show off or so called as break. So the tightening torque, like I mentioned just now again, is 160 to 180 Newton meter. So you can see here at the eighth picture, the M14 double head knife has already is show off or so called as break. 
Okay. For the next slide. A part of installation, we also have our plugin box installation. So you can see here, these are some pictures of our plugin box. Of course, you need to ensure during the installation, the plugin box rotary handle. Sorry. You need to ensure the plugin box rotary handle is in off position. Next. You need to ensure the RYBN phase sequence is in line of the plugin box are in line. If you see at the at the middle right of the slide, uh, there are there is a plugin hole there. For your information, our plugin box is equipped with the earth bar. So for the for the additional purpose, for the additional safety purpose, our earth bar when it is connecting with our bus switch system, the earth bar will first in and also last out. We will move to the next next slide. Okay, this is the our vertical spring hanger installation. You can see here uh, a picture of our spring hanger. Basically, you must make sure that you need to avoid install this spring hanger located at the bus duct joint or plugging hole. Okay, we move to the next slide. Okay, last but not least, this is our horizontal hanger installation. Same goes to the plug-in box. You need to avoid to install this horizontal spring hanger at the joint. So our EPE standard installation supporting pitch should be 1.5 millimeter. 1.5 meter, sorry. 1.5 meter. Okay, so after you have completed the installation, you also need to do the inspection on the bus tray systems. So one of the vital points here is about the insulation resistance value against the bus duct length. If you see at the point number six, okay, after the installation, the bus duct mega shall be tested at 1000 volt for one minute with this reference insulation resistance value stated below. For example, if the bus duct length is more than 50 meter, then the insulation resistance should be more than 10 mega ohms. On the other hand, if the bus duct length is lesser than 10 meter, then the insulation resistance should be more than 100 mega ohms. If you see at the middle of this slide, uh, there is a picture whereby our bus duct is connected to the transformer. So come up with the flexible conductor. Okay, it is the our periodic busway inspection and maintenance. Okay, I will show you the next slide. Okay. 
Okay. Right. So here is the periodic busway maintenance. First, we recommend you to do the monthly temperature check on all bus duct joint sections by using the portable temperature infrared detector. Then, you need to record all temperature readings according to the actual current load of the bus duct line. Please make sure the maximum design temperature for bus duct shall be 95 degrees Celsius. So, if you notice any temperature points, captured beyond 95 degrees Celsius on the bus duct, there will be a potential for going to occur soon due to overheating at that point. However, you need to remember also, if the temperature is increasing and achieve around 70 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius, which is below the 95 degrees Celsius, so you need to do the inspection at the hotspot area and you need to check you need to check at the hotspot area whether everything is good or not. So, in that case, please contact our EPE team as soon as possible for us to rectify the problems. Or you, or you also can do is to shut down the bus stop and inspect the fault point. Next, I will move to the next slide. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is just your additional information from our R&D side. EPE just developed a temperature monitoring display unit with sensors attached at the plant unit clips. This is to monitor the heat on the clip. The temperature reading will be displayed and alarms will be set within permissible limits. And for your information, currently we are also developing temperature sensor monitoring system for the bus start joint sections. <clears throat> so that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the slide.